Originally, they had more members. They kind of scaled back a little bit, have gone through some changes, and are getting ready to unleash it all. Is that dramatic enough, Lynn? Does that Close. Close. Fate of Adam are in with me tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Uh, introduce yourself. Say what you do. What's up, guys? LG Reaper here. Fate of Adam. What's up? Chris is here. Chris Thomas. Play the drums. All right, so we've got you guys in tonight, and scaled down. I think the last time I talked to you, you were—I want to say five. Yeah, we were a five-piece, five-piece band. Now you've scaled back down to three. Well, we're actually four. You're actually um, four. We're one. We have short a bass tonight. player. He's he's in Chattanooga. He's working a job. He just wasn't able to be here today. Um, That's Michael the way Johansson. it works. Yeah. What's his name? Michael Johansson is his name. Okay, so now you're a four-piece. We are a four-piece. It may turn into another five-piece in the next month or so. Maybe we've got a guy that we thought about bringing back. I guess fans just have to wait for that. It's the ebb and flow kind of thing. It's yeah. Bands do that. You have that transition period where uh, maybe the creative process is just not going the way you thought it would. Right. Not everybody's on board. It's not always about egos. I think no, you, you no. see a lot of, oh, well, they just couldn't get along. Creative differences, <laughs> which is a whitewash for saying they just didn't agree on what they were working on. Now, sometimes... Right. There is bad blood, but I don't think that's the case here, right? No, and uh, one of the, I guess one of the best ways to describe our case is we're in a day and age now where the music industry is hard to make a living in. So people, they ride it for so long, but eventually they're like, hey, I got to go make money before I go homeless. So they jump off the bandwagon. So I had to find another you know person to replace them. And that's kind of what's going on. That's A lot of bands are having to go through downsizing and upgrading and just back and forth, back and forth transitional periods we're yes. talking about that tonight with fate of adams you guys have got uh, a new is it an ep that you're putting together or a full album um actually it's going to be a full album we're going to release half of it right around the middle of april and you've got special things that you're going to be doing for this album oh, so yes. we're going to we're going to touch on what you've got that you're working on we're going to get in a couple of songs they've brought instruments so we're going to get a performance <laughs> or two out of you tonight that's part of the conversation we'll have with Fate of Adam a little bit later as we continue on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. Double C and the LG in tonight. No, that didn't sound even close to right. It's Fate of Adam in with me tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. I say double C. You've got Chris and Chris and then Lynn. You guys are in with me. So I think I'm going to steal that from you, Chris. You're going to steal that I from me, I'm double C and the LG? You. Yeah. That okay. cool. Uh, um, I will give you the address after the show where you can send royalties to. Okay, cool. Just, no problem. Just saying. <laughs> Fate of Adam, uh, working on your next release. And this one's kind of going to be a special one, I think, this time around. Yes. Uh, the first time around, you guys are still staying with the same sound. Mm -hmm. You are, where would you classify your music? Now, that's where this is going to get a little kind of crazy. We've always been known for our ballads and then doing our really heavy, kind of, you know, just straight metal. Um, this time, we're going to be adventuring into rock then your ballad, kind of ballad rock, ballad metal, and metal. You're going to hear influences like Iron Maiden. You're going to hear influences like Stone Sour and just a bunch of different things. You didn't say it. I'm going to say it. Power <laughs> ballad. Power ballad. There I'm, is I'm a, a lost power, art. Power well, there were some big hits for a lot of bands. We've never wrote love songs before. And now this, this album actually has a couple of different love songs. It's not something I'm good at. Never have been. You have had a lineup change. You've gone through some differences now. How has oh, that yeah. affected the songwriting? Um, actually, and that's kind of it's kind of interesting you ask that. Me and Chris Lowe, when he came in the band, me and him have always clicked really well when we write our music. This album, the first album everybody got, he didn't play or help me write any of those songs. It was always the past band members and me. When Chris Lowe came into the band, there's, I think, what did I say, four songs that you felt right? So me and him have wrote four songs on this. And since Michael Johansson and Chris Thomas have been in the band, that's why we brought back some of the older ones. We rewrote them. So there's some fans that's heard a couple of the songs that we're doing. But the brand new stuff, it has a lot of these influences from the new guys. And believe it or not, the songwriting has been easier this time. It's flowed better. So are they allowing you to, I guess I should say, you're allowing them to put more input, but it's not really oh, yeah. allowing. It's... You're, I've always believed in everybody puts in their own flavor. You know, I may come to band practice with lyrics. I may even have a certain chord structure. You know, if you're a musician, you know you have a key. So I may come in with a key and lyrics. I may already have kind of idea what I want to do vocally. Chris will come in. Okay, I hear this. Chris Thomas has brought in the element of percussion of saying, hey, what about this? What about this? But he's more of an open drummer than I've ever had, which he doesn't care to say, okay, what are you hearing? 
I describe it like a you know like I've got my hands tied behind my back because I'm not a drummer. And he's actually been able to read my mind better than any other drummer I've had. He's doing more than just keeping time. He's actually been, I yeah. can't see the quote-unquote, but melodic drumming. So it actually fits. So so he's more of, a, dare I say, a backbeat to what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. See, I fit that in nicely. You like that one? Let's get one of your songs in. How about You? You was written, I don't even think it's been written for a complete month. Maybe, maybe for a month and a half. I actually went through and done a Facebook poll where I brought in just like maybe 50 fans. And did a closed loop page. Let them hear literally an iPad recording that I did. And it was just, it blew them away. They they really wanted to hear the full band version. And the full band version, I think, is going to be, it's going to be closer to probably, probably style like Kings of Leon when you hear it. If you took Kings of Leon and put Metallica with them. That would be an interesting be, concept. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept <laughs> song. It really is. When they hear it, they'll get it. They'll understand. Well, we're going to go with the scaled down version tonight. Exactly. It's Fate of Adam, the acoustic in studio exclusive for the nine o'clock news local edition. It's you.
We've gotten one song out of them. Don't worry. I plan to get them on the hook for another one, too. As we've got Fate of Adam on the 9 o'clock News Local Edition here on Rock 93.7. They're talking with us tonight. They are working up their next album. You guys are going into the studio to record this. You did the, the GoFundMe route? Yes. And the reason why is because we're independent. It's really tough for an independent band to really hit the road, raise a lot of money to go out there and record. And if you want a good recording, especially if you want it to be produced by a good producer, you're going to pay money. And I think the last time we recorded the EP, the last one everybody got, that was that range anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars. I can't go lower than that. You know, we've already set the bar at one spot, so we can't go lower than that. So we're spending about the same amount of money this time. We're trying to raise about twenty five hundred dollars. That's going to help with travel and what's going to finish up doing what we've already raised to do. And we're going to run that probably till probably about the middle of April when everything's done. So if we do end up getting all that in. Hopefully, there'll be a little bit left over to do all the CD pressing so we can do a CD release party and everybody gets their copies. What kind of extras are you throwing out there? The album that's signed with your name on the cover, of course, with the album artwork. It won't just be your name written on it. I mean, there's actually going to be a graphic artist that does this. We're doing a T-shirt and scaled down album. Everything's on it. And as they go up, um, I think around 100 bucks, you can even get a vinyl if you want a vinyl record of it. We're going to have that made for the people. 180 who- gram. I guess I, I, you're asking <laughs> whatever you guy, say. That's the stuff. I don't even. I didn't bring notes. I didn't know I was going to have to. That's usually the standard that they use these days. 180 okay. gram. That's the finer vinyl. And I've been looking into this. So I mean, I'm still actually researching into this. And when everything's mixed and mastered and ready to roll, that's when I'm probably going to send it off to those companies because we all want a vinyl copy. I find that so fascinating these days in the world of music. Everybody's going for the digital thing, but a lot of bands uh, and a lot of fans are reaching out to bands saying, "Hey." No, I still want the vinyl. After all this time, it's held up better and longer. Yes. What they need is to come up with the cheaper record players. They've got those laser <laughs> ones. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind to have that for the price of an iPhone instead of, well, I'll tell you what, you can Google it and find out how much it is because it's ridiculously high. I don't think you'll need one for years, though, because these are new pressings. The cool uh-huh. thing about those is they read through scratches and grooves and stuff. So Really? Um, very interesting technology. You guys are applying, getting the vinyl out there to yes. fans. That's an option. What about uh, jamming? Can I come in and jam with you? Yeah, we've actually offered that. Um, We've actually, I think the video that we have on GoFundMe, we were offering, you can either come in and jam with us or we'll come to your house and do a party, acoustic party, or do a live band full party. And I'd say you're probably looking at probably closer to a $500 to a $1,000 donation for something like that. So you bet what you're saying is basically whatever the fans are willing to help be a part of. Exactly. You're trying to make it worth their while because you're also making this album totally fan tribute. Oh, yeah. That's what's really great about this. It's not just, hey, you can help help us get into the studio. This right. is, you guys are picking the songs, too. I think you said it's a fan tribute album that you're putting together. And we've been taking polls on which songs would go out there, and we've been talking to fans. But I, I guess the biggest thing is, you know, with the artwork, that that was really revolutionary. I've not really not seen a lot of bands really go through and say, hey, these are our fans. We're going to put every one of their names on the front of our album. Never seen that before. And we're trying to get about, about 250 people is what we're trying to get a hold of, which... That'll be accomplished, I'm sure. If it starts getting more than that, it's going to start getting really, really small. Um, as far as the fan tribute album, it's it's all those songs that haven't been recorded that the fans have wanted us to record. And these are songs, too, that you've played whenever you go out and do live oh, yes. shows that your real fans have gotten to yes. know and things. There's so. only two brand new songs that we've actually sat down and wrote in the last 30 days. There's we did one songs. of those earlier, and I think we've still got another one that we're going to get to a little bit later. As we continue with Fate of Adam on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. We've got guitars at the ready. Well, we've got them on standby. They're going to bring them out here in a moment. It's Fate of Adam in with me tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. We got a song out of you guys earlier, and I've got one more I want to get out of you before we let you out of here tonight. We want to talk a little bit more, though, about what you've been working on. You've... I think you said you've written a couple of new songs in like the last 30 days. That's right. The rest of these songs have kind of been around a little bit, but never really put out the way you're wanting to put them out exactly. now, giving fans a chance to get those. You have been out performing. Where have you been performing at? We have been performing for the last, well, since we were on, um, since we were on the local edition here, we've been to Nashville. We've been to Huntsville, Alabama, almost every state around us. Nashville, we really beat up a lot. Um, we have a huge fan base now in Nashville that just really supports us every time we go there. And we know so many new bands now. So, I mean, it's really been, Nashville has been a, a, a hub, so to speak. Um, we kind of made our way down to Memphis. 
Um, we've done some Knoxville shows, but we've tried to stay in the region a lot so we can really build ourselves here. Now, with that said, this April on tour for the whole summer, we're talking Pennsylvania, Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, Alabama again, trying to get into the North Carolina in the Georgia area, trying to really find where the fans are there. So we're going to be doing a lot of traveling as soon as this album releases. Once you get out of the studio, you're going to stay out of the studio for a while. Very much. But the idea is, is what money we take and actually make from this album, we're going to be going back into the studio by the end of the year, finishing it with another six songs. Pretty much anybody who's bought or donated to, we're going to help them with that second range. But when we release a new album, That'll be something completely different. So that'll be like volume two, or Basically. will that be? Okay. Basically. It's just, it's, you know, I don't have 20 grand in my pocket. I, so, I mean, who does? <laughs> our, our producer in Toledo, Ohio, he was like, how about we just do six songs? We know you're broke. Let's get to another one. This one, uh, second performance we've got from you, Kill the Memory. Kill This Memory is a song I wrote about my mother uh, two years ago when she passed away. I was going through a lot of PTSD at the time, and... This song flowed out of me, just poured out, flopped on the paper. I brought it to the band. This song has a really strong Red Hot Chili Peppers influence um, and really just has a lot of strong down-home southern blues. But we've made it. We've got a metal twist to it. And when I wrote it, more people like this acoustic. They really do. They love the, the full version of it as well. But it really was just talking about my mom when she passed away. Um, Chris Lowe had lost his father about the same time, and this really was kind of his way to outlet that as well. So it's a, an emotional release. Oh, yes. Both lyrically and melodically? We, the... Yeah. We've waited for this one. Ourselves, we have waited for this one for two years. But we didn't want to We didn't want to record it ourselves like at home and put it out because we really wanted to do it justice with a producer that really would set down and what we couldn't see, he could. And that's what we really wanted to do with this song. That's the whole point of you going for this whole taking the trip to Ohio. Oh, yes. You're wanting someone to help shape this. Well, let's give this a listen. You guys grab your guitars. It's Kill This Memory. It's Fate of Adam on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7.
Help me wash it away It's been a conversation and a couple of performances tonight with Fate of Adam on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. Uh, Chris, Lynn, and Chris, yeah. I want to thank you three for coming in to talk with me tonight. You it's guys are trying to get this done. You've got the whole GoFundMe thing up online. You're going to run that for a while longer. Yes. You're planning to head off to Ohio to start recording this thing. Where can they keep up with you online? Oh, always Facebook forward slash Fate of Adam. It's really the best place. You can keep on with us on Twitter as well. If you really just can't find us, go to Google, type in Fate of Adam, not Faith of Adam or anything like that, Fate of Adam. And everything we're doing, we're basically, we're trying to post daily on the GoFundMe, straight to Facebook, so everybody sees something going on. We're trying to at least give updates, do videos, stuff like that. There's going to be some special performances we'll put online as we go. So you may actually hear this whole album before it releases acoustically, not only here, but not before. So you guys are getting more active with the social stuff that oh, you're yes, trying to do. Trying so our best. Are you doing any streaming through like YouTube or, or what's uh, Periscope? That's we've another not done one. it yet, but I've actually been looking into it. Um, it's really been, we've got the technology kind of together now. And it's really just putting it together and start doing it. And that's what we really have been looking into doing. Really well, you soon. said stick with Facebook. And actually, I think they're slowly rolling out. They're doing yeah. a live streaming feature on there too. It's not catching on everywhere just yet, but right. who knows? Maybe you can use. I that have outlet. seen the live the live uh, stream feature on there, and I've really wanted to do like a something like a band practice from that. Just kind of let some people really. Or get maybe into even it. like what we're doing, question and answer. Of course, we've already covered quite a bit here, oh, yeah. so uh, you guys can keep up with them on Facebook. And uh, as it gets closer to releasing something, you'll let them know about that too. Oh yeah, it'll be huge. I mean, pretty much every town that can hear this right now will be coming to your town for a CD release party. And I appreciate you guys giving me these uh, couple of performances. Always love getting the exclusives. Awesome, it's just kind of nice. Fate of Adam, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. you coming in on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7.